from the Association of Apprentices, I'm joined by their CEO, Emily Austin, and Chair Sir Peter Eslin. Good to see you guys. Peter, first of all, in terms of employers and individuals, why are apprenticeships so important? So for the employer, you know, it is really an opportunity to recruit, retain talent. You know, it, it's a, a, an upskilling pathway uh, to um, future success for business. And, and it's proved, evidence shows that it's a real boost to the economy. And for the apprentice, it creates choice, or for the young learner in particular. You know, not, not every individual wants to go to university, and this is an opportunity for young people to earn and learn uh, at the same time. And Emily, the reality is many apprenticeships aren't completed. How can this be addressed? Well, the Department for Education published data in the last funding year that that's right, only 50%, around 50% of apprentices did complete their programme. But there's actually quite a lot that sits behind that figure and very many varied reasons. And there was research published last year which looked into the factors contributing to withdrawals. And there were things like lack of employer support or poor training provision, but also high workload, loss of motivation, fallout from COVID, financial support. And actually, even within that, responses varied for specific groups. So younger people needed more financial support. Existing colleagues needed more support with their workload. Um, new entrants to apprenticeships needed more pastoral care. So actually, it's quite a complex picture. And before we can address it, we need to look at the data that sits behind that figure. Uh, and how can em employers, how can the government give apprentices the best possible experience? Apprentices say the, the things they enjoy the most about the apprenticeship is the ability to get a qualification, to improve employability, to get ahead. But they also say they need more time to study, more time to complete assignments. Um, and employers can, these are things employers you know, can address. Um, apprentices also say that they want access to support networks, so mentors or peer groups such as the Association of Apprentices. And again, employers can signpost that to improve experiences. I think government have a role to play too, um, not only in the design and delivery of apprenticeships, but also engaging with apprentices. You know, they're often the least engaged um, group of individuals in the apprenticeship system, but it impacts them the most. So I think engagement is really important. But actually, it's a role for everybody. Anybody who works with apprentices, anybody who um, delivers apprenticeships has a role to play in improving the experiences. And sort of collectively, we need to change the focus from starting apprenticeships, which is very important, but actually um, making sure the experience is great and that we can retain them and that more can complete. And Peter, so many different things often come down to this question. Is more investment needed? Yes, is the short answer. But let's look at that in the context of why. You know, businesses uh, can be capital intensive or they're people intensive. And if you're a people intensive business, you know, you're investing in talent. Uh, and the importance there is, you know, apprenticeships are, uh, are really something that we've been doing for centuries. I mean, it's not new, but it's vital to economic growth. But it also, if you look at that nascent talent, you know, if you're investing in people, the give back um, is fantastic. And, and the, as I say, the retention ratios for apprentices is, is, is superb. So it's creating that choice. Uh, and I think in the marketplace today, you know, simply just trying to direct talent in one direction isn't helpful. Question to both of you, starting with you, Emily. How does the AOA support its members? In many ways. Um, first and foremost, we're a, a not-for-profit membership organisation that was set up to connect apprentices in the UK. And we do that via the UK's only dedicated social and professional networking platform, um, which is a really safe space for apprentices to come together online. Um, and particularly for those who are feeling isolated and lonely, if they're in a smaller organisation, it's a really important um, community and it is a community they go on to share advice um, share best practice give advice etc um, and you know that's that's a, a wonderful experience for those that wouldn't have accessed that or potentially hadn't gone to university and missed out on some of that we also offer face-to-face um, -face events networking events throughout the country so they can come together with peers and sort of really cement those relationships and we offer lots of resources lots of learning resources on things that are not only work related but also life related Peter so sort of the apprenticeship ecosystem, if we can call it that, is really well supported by some fantastic training providers. As I said, we've got an increasing number uh, of employers. But as Emily said, the piece that's been missing in the past, certainly over the last decade or so, is, well, who's supporting the apprentices themselves? And sometimes it's easier to ask a peer, look, how do I deal with my boss? Um, or I'm going through this particular issue. 
So um, it, it really is very much supporting uh, apprentices um, to thrive, but at the same time also encouraging them to carry on participating post-qualification to help other apprentices. So you create that alumni network as well, which actually is also very fulfilling for the apprentices. Peter, Emily, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.